Good morning. Welcome to our Bible study this morning. This morning with St. Patrick's Day just around the corner, I thought we would study the color green in the Bible and see what we can learn from the color green. Uh, we'll be looking this morning at Psalm 52, verses 8 and 9. Psalm 52, verses 8 and 9, and you'll see as you turn there, you'll see that the color green is mentioned. <clears throat> And as a matter of fact, in the context, the color green is mentioned as a picture of a life of blessings or a life of prosperity or a, a life of uh, plentiful existence, that type of idea. Okay, that's Psalm 52, verses 8 and 9. Let me just remind you very quickly, if you would like a written copy of this lesson, you're welcome to get it from my blog. My blog is entitled Settled in Heaven. It's found in wordpress.com. Uh, when you get there, look for the lesson entitled St. Patrick's Day Devotion. St. Patrick's Day Devotion. That's what we're looking at this morning. Okay, as I said, keep in mind, for St. Patrick's Day, the color to wear is green. Uh, there's a there's a lot of different ideas why green is the picture for St. Patrick's Day. Most people believe one of the reasons why is it's because shamrocks are green. And if you study the history of St. Patrick, you'll find that as a Christian missionary, he used a shamrock to picture the Trinity. And so there are people who believe that because he used this shamrock and this day was set up to honor him by the Catholic Church, that... Uh, the color green was chosen to symbolize St. Patrick's Day. There's another idea. St. Patrick's uh, was a, a Catholic missionary to Ireland. Ireland is known for its green hills and for its, its uh, flourishing plant life. And so some people believe that because he was a Catholic missionary to Ireland, that that's why the color green is talked to or used for St. Patrick's Day as well. I'm not really sure. I'm not that uh, familiar with a lot of the history of the Catholic Church as far as these type of things go. But in any case, we do know St. Patrick's Day is many times celebrated with the color green. Okay. When we study the color green in the Bible, what do we learn by it? Here in Psalm 52, we're going to find that the color green is a picture of a bountiful life or a blessed life that comes from the Lord. Listen to what's said in Psalm 52 verses 8 and 9. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of my God forever and ever. I will praise thee forever because thou hast done it. And I will wait on thy name for it is good before thy saints. Okay, now folks, let me just cover a few things real quickly. Keep in mind, the person who is saying this is King David. King David is a saved person. He believed that there was going to be a coming Messiah who would come to the earth and die and be sacrificed for his sins. David believed that. He was a follower of Jehovah, just like us in the New Testament are followers of Jehovah. We're followers of the Lord. When David said, I am like a green olive tree in the house of God, he is talking as a follower of the Lord. Any one of us who is saved, any one of us who is truly a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, any one of us who has had our sins forgiven, any one of us who has been promised and guaranteed an eternity with God, living with Him forever in heaven, with our Lord, any of us who can say those things, that have taken place in our life, we can truly say we are a blessed people. No matter what else might be going on in our lives, and I realize in today's time, folks, there's a lot of problems a lot of people face. There are a lot of people that have health problems. There's a lot of people who have financial problems, especially with the unemployment rate and all the way it is. There's many people with many other type of earthly problems on earth. You may have a loved one who's suffering for some reason, whether physically or even spiritually. You may have lost loved ones and <clears throat> you're so concerned about their spiritual condition. There are many, many, many trials that we all face every day. My point is this. As long as we know we have been saved through the shed blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
as long as we know that Jesus is our Lord. As long as we know that we are headed for an eternal dwelling place with God, our Father in heaven. Folks, we can say truly we've been blessed. Here King David says, I am like a green olive tree in the house of God, saying his life was flourishing in the sense the Lord was blessing him. The Lord had met his spiritual needs in his life. If you remember, King David's life had a lot of problems in it. He had a lot of family problems, a lot of national problems. His life wasn't just the easiest life to live. And yet David could clearly say, look, I've been blessed because I know how the Lord has been so good to me, spiritually especially. He goes on, I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. Right here we find it. <clears throat> King David knew that these blessings from God were an act of God's mercy. What is mercy? It's when God withholds harmful things from us that we deserve. The greatest example of God's mercy is withholding the lake of fire from those of us who deserve it, which is every one of us. I mean, think about it. Every one of us who live on the planet Earth, we are fallen, sinful creatures. We deserve to live in eternity in the lake of fire. <clears throat> God could stand back, fold his arms, and watch every one of us go to the lake of fire, and he would be perfectly just because we all deserve it. But God, by his grace, sent his son to die on the cross for our sins. <clears throat> and one of the greatest reasons why God the Father did that, to send his son to die on the cross, was so that we could escape that lake of fire for an eternity. See how good the Lord is to us? That's an act of his mercy. He's withholding the lake of fire from us. Even though we deserve the lake of fire, he withholds it from us. That's mercy. David says, I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. He goes on. <clears throat> I will praise thee forever because thou hast done it. David says, look, I am, I am spiritually blessed. I thank the Lord for his mercy because I realize I don't deserve these spiritual blessings. I, I realize I deserve a horrible eternity. But the Lord saw fit to withhold that from me and to save me. So he said, now that I think about how good the Lord's been to me, and now that I think about how he's allowed me to escape this horrible eternity that was awaiting me, I'm going to praise him forever and ever. See, David recognized how great the Lord had been to him. David recognized the tremendous blessings God had given to him. In spite of his physical problems here on earth, David realized his spiritual blessings outnumbered them all. But because of that, now David dedicates in his heart to praise God. I will praise thee forever because thou hast done it. He said, David said, look, I'm going to praise you. I'm going to give you the glory. I'm going to give you the honor. I'm going to make you shine in the eyes of others. Why, David? Because he realized the Lord's the one that had blessed him. The Lord is the one that had shown him mercy. The Lord is the one that is causing his spiritual life to flourish. He goes on. And I will wait on thy name, meaning he will what? He will submit to the Lord's will for his life. He'll wait on him. He'll serve him is another way to put that. David recognized, look, this God is the one that has blessed me. This God is the one that has saved me. So therefore, I'm going to be concerned about what he wants me to do with my life. I'm going to seek out his will for my life, and I'm going to try to follow his will for my life. After all he's done for me, this is the least that I can do. He goes on, for it is good before thy saints. Now folks, let's be sure we don't misunderstand what the word saint means. In the Bible, when you read the word saint, it means <clears throat> one who has been separated from the world. That's what the word saint really means. To be separated from the world. And, and to be separated to God. Two aspects of the same separation. So what it's saying is this. When the Lord saves us. What does he do? He separates us from this world. He separates us to himself. We now are a special people in God's eyes. We have been separated from the sin of this world. From the judgment of that sin. We've been separated from the 
condemnation of this sin. We've been separated from the bondage of this sin. See, he separated us out and made us special in his sight. Folks, <clears throat> in the Lord's sight, his people are very special. That's why everyone who is saved is described as a saint in the Bible. Now, I know in the Catholic Church and perhaps in some other other uh, denominations and other religions, a saint might mean something else. But biblically, scripturally, in God's sight, who is a saint? It's anyone who has been saved by his grace. David says, it is good before thy saints. He said, look, for me to serve you, for me to wait on your name, for me to serve you, for me to pattern my life after your will for my life, for me to serve you and for me to minister for you and for me to give my life for you. That's good for thy saints. Why? Number one, how does this help? When, when one Christian follows the will of the Lord, how does that help other Christians? Number one, it sets a good example for them. Number two, <clears throat> it makes it easier for that person to serve the Lord. You know, if you have to do something alone, it's much harder than if you have somebody else to do it with. I mean, that's just common knowledge. That's just the way it is. You know, if I know when I was young, I used to be scared of the dark. It used to be so hard for me to go down in the basement after the sun went down, realizing that I'm going to have to go down where it's dark. But boy, if Dad went with me, it was no big deal. Why? I had somebody to go with me. I wasn't going down there alone to face the dark alone. I had somebody to face it with me. <clears throat> Folks, when Christians seek out the will of the Lord and follow the Lord's will for their life, that not only encourages other Christians to do the same, but it actually strengthens them. Because now they can say, hey, I'm not in this fight alone. I now can uh, <clears throat> seek the Lord's will for my life as well, knowing there's other people doing the very same thing. So it's a matter of setting the proper example, but it's also a matter of encouraging. It's a matter of strengthening. It's a matter of helping other Christians to do what's right because you are doing what's right. That's why David said, <clears throat> when he waits on the name of the Lord, it is good before thy saints. So folks, on this St. Patrick's Day, and, and really every day we should think about these things. But especially on St. Patrick's Day, when we see everybody dressed in green, and when we see all the color green all over, what should we remember? We should remember, you know, I am really blessed of the Lord. If I'm saved, I am blessed of the Lord, and therefore I should dedicate my life to serve Him. I should serve Him in a great way today because I remember all the blessings He's given to me, all the spiritual blessings He's given to me. But what about if, you're, if you've never been saved? When St. Patrick's Day comes around, or even any day, keep in mind that that state of blessedness is awaiting you as well. The Bible makes it plain that through repentance and belief, a person is saved. In other words, by turning to Christ, and by trusting in Him as our Savior, by turning from our sins, by willing to say, I'm no longer going to live my life the way I want to, but I'm now willing to turn my life over to you, dear Lord. I'm willing to do what you would have me to do. I realize I can't save myself. So I'm coming before you in faith asking you to please save me. Please intervene. When I can't save myself, you must intervene and save me. And in doing that, I'm turning my life over to you where now I'm going to follow you. By someone having that attitude and coming before the Lord in repentance and belief like that, they can enter into the state of spiritual blessedness as well. <clears throat> Folks, St. Patrick's Day can be a great benefit to all of us by simply remembering how blessed we are of the Lord and our need to serve Him in greater ways. And for those who aren't saved, it should be a reminder of, of our need to be saved and enter into that state of blessedness. And then we too can walk with the Lord and serve him knowing that we have entered into his spiritual blessings. Thank you very much for your time. May the Lord bless you.